this video is going to be part two of chapter one, part two of two for chapter one for the Cisco CCNA NETICAD course, course one. And this is the version 5.1 of the materials. And if you like this video, then you can either click like or not below. That's up to you. You can subscribe to my channel if you want to see when new videos come out. And I've got an introduction video if you want to check that out as well, which gives a little bit of background on myself. Okay, so let's talk about part two of this chapter. In this part, we're going to we're going to look at the network as a platform. So that we've we've looked at WANs and we've looked at WLANs and we've looked at the different types of networks and how we connect on those. And so now we're going to say when we have a network, how do we use that in our business or for uh, for entertainment? Um, what, what do we do for that? And and we we say we're going to use that as a platform. So we're going to look at what we call converged networks. And when we start converging networks, we are looking at the use of the network to come in and allow us to uh, do different types of mediums. And so when we're talking about um, uh, traditional separate networks, we did different things with different types of networks. And that was the way traditional networks worked here is we would have a device and we would connect in through the network and we would um, do some type of uh, connection. And in this case, we would have computer networks and we would have what we would call a rule agreement standard or the networks had um, a standard that we knew we could communicate with. So we knew that when we connected, we would be using Ethernet for an example and that we could connect and send messages back and forth. And that message could be anything from a file to a web page uh, to a print job, something along those lines. So don't think of the message as an actual email because that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about information being sent back and forth. And traditionally, we had these separated. We would have uh, a phone would be on the network and it would have its own connection and we would put phone lines in and we would put computer network lines in and then we would have broadcast networks. So you might have a television or you might have a video video conferencing set up. And then in the new way that we're doing it, when we're talking about converged networks, we are coming in now and we're saying that we're going to converge everything together or a convergence. And so we're coming through and integrating everything into the network. So all of our mediums now are being sent through one common converged network and we have a rule agreement standard so everything can go through. So now instead of having a computer and a phone and uh, maybe video conferencing, we can converge all those together and now we have an IP phone, we have IP video conferencing and those services get converged or put together, which makes it a lot easier to uh, really uh, put the network together and then uh, see how everything or manage it all, I guess is the right word to say. We can manage everything a lot better or a lot easier. So when we put those converged networks together, we need to have reliable networks. And by reliable networks, we, we, need, we know we need to have certain things for that network to operate. And for that network to be reliable, we have to have certain things come together. We have to have fault tolerance. And fault tolerance means that we just, um, we need to have uptime. So that, um, and then to have that uptime, uh, the fault tolerance means that if one power supply goes out in a server, we have two power supplies uh, in that server. So if one goes out, the other one takes over. We have battery backups on our systems. Uh, we have uh, maybe a generator on our building so that if the, if the electricity goes out um, or if something goes out, we can start the uh, generator and keep power running to the building. Um, that, that's one aspect of um, the network arch architecture to have a reliable network. The other uh, piece of it is scalability. How easy is it for us to grow the network? Can we add pieces to it? Can we add more subnets in there? Can we add more devices on there? Can we add another server into the mix? Uh, thinking back in chapter one, when we uh, chapter one, part one, when we talked about the logical model, or excuse me, the physical model, and we were looking at the different servers and the web servers. Let's say we need to add a second web server uh, because we're going to add another web server to uh, do some load balancing so that we're going to build our business and we're going to have more uh, customers coming in ordering things from us. So we put a second web server in so that we can, one, have fault tolerance and we can do some load balancing between those servers. And our network needs to be able to scale up or have that scalability. Another piece to it is what we call QoS or quality of service. And this is a term you'll hear in the Cisco world and other places too. But particularly here in this course, you'll, you'll see quality of service. That means 
do we have the bandwidth? Um, or think when we when we make a video conference call, um, are we going to be able to uh, have it break up on us? I mean, are we going to have you know? Is it going to be high quality? Is it going to be high definition? Uh, are we going to have that quality of service to where is the, are, are we going to be losing packets of information, or is everything going to work like it's supposed to? And then last but not the least, in fact, in my opinion, is one of the most important pieces is the security. How secure is our information? Because when we are dealing with information. Uh, and that's mainly what we do in the IT world. The, the I is for information, and that's what we do. We we store information. We take information, we store it, and we we have to have it available for retrieval and for decision making. And part of that is making that data secure so that someone else couldn't take that and do something with it, or you know, make sure that uh, uh, that that we can assure that that information not being used in a manner it's not supposed to be. So what we're going to do down here is just uh, look at a few slides in a more graph, a different way to graphically look at these from a fault tolerance standpoint. So if we were looking at fault tolerance here, we build this network to where we have multiple routers coming into our facility, and so we have different, we have these different routers here, and we have different way access. You know, we have different ways to come in. So if this router goes out, let's say we lose power over here, and the information can still instead of this router coming up to here it can then be directed over to here through this router and then on out to the internet we're not going to lose connection to the internet just because we lose one router and that gives us time then to come in and replace that router or update that router to just maybe even just turn the power back onto it but this gives us our fault tolerance the scalability and, and just real easy, can we add more networks to it? So we have our original network here, and we say now that we need to, we had our original, oh well, our original network here, and now we need to add another connection in because we need to add another, let's say that we're gonna put a new training facility in, and we're gonna start training uh, customers at our, at our IT training facility, and we need to add a new classroom in. Well, does it have the ability to add on? Does that router have the ability to add another port into it? Or does it have a port on there that we can uh, plug another, uh, uh, network into it, another LAN. So we need to be aware of that as well. The quality of service just is it's managed by the router. It ensures that the priorities are matched with the type of communication and it's important to the organization. In other words, um, if video is going through and there's a video conference call, does it have the priority? Uh, web pages are usually going to receive a lower priority. Emails are a lower priority, but streaming media is going to get a higher priority because you can't have it cutting in and out on you. Uh, if you can only hear every other word, uh, it's not going to be very, uh, uh, not a very good service, and you're not going to want to use it. So the phones, uh, the video streaming, things like that, uh, those are going to have a higher priority in the quality of service arena. And then on the security, do we have uh, do we have measures in place? Do we have firewalls in place? Do our routers have logins and passwords in them? Are our logins and passwords encrypted? Uh, do we have the physical access to those routers locked up? Are those routers just setting out so where somebody can just walk up to them and uh, plug a USB uh, a USB drive into them, uh, or just walk up and power them off? I mean, from from a physical security on that, you know, uh, somebody get mad and just walk over and just turn the router off and shut the system down. So that that's security is a large encompassing area and that's just uh, one of the areas though when we're talking about a reliable network do we have a reliable network when you get into the security area we talk about it here briefly but if you go into the security information security information technology or security uh, security area uh, you're get one of the terms that you're going to need to memorize and learn uh, especially if you go to the CompTIA uh, Network Security Plus and uh, onto the uh, other security certifications. But one of the things that's drilled in continually is what we call CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Uh, I remember it by as CIA, not the org not the uh, U.S. government CIA, but confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And that's the three sides to our data on security. Do we know that our data? We we have confidence that our data is intact. That what we say the information that's there is accurate 
it's it's in, it's in, in the integrity piece of it means that we know what what we say is there is there, and then the availability. Do we have availability to it? If we lock our data up so tight that we can't get to it, then we don't we lose one aspect of our security, and it's no it's no good to us. So we need to have it available. We need to make sure that the data that's there is the correct data, that it's not been changed uh, by somebody, and that we're confident that uh, that we know that we that we are providing the correct data as well. Uh, another aspect of networks is that they're constantly changing. Uh, with anything in technology, uh, it rapidly changes over time, so you always have to stay on top of it. Well, one of the uh, things that we talk about in this chapter is talking about different trends such as BYOD. And BYOD is simply bring your own device. That just means are you allowing your people that come to your network area to connect in with their own devices? Can they get in and get services with their own devices? Uh, are you allowing online collaboration? Uh, do you have video services, cloud computing? Uh, instead of storing your files locally, are you storing them on something like a Dropbox or a Google Drive or uh, you know, some other type of uh, online uh, computing area? Uh, do you allow access to YouTube, to Instagram, to Facebook, for social media, things like that? Those are the way we interact with our networks, but those are questions and answers that need to be dealt with as we're building our networks and as networks change over time. And so we're also going to look at how we networking technologies are changing the home environment identify basic security threats, and also look at the understanding of switching and routing infrastructure of a network. So some of the new trends uh, we have are bring your own devices. Mobile devices, uh, they are ex uh, the, the, that market is exploding, um, and no pun intended towards the Samsung phones. Um, just as, as a, uh, if this video is being watched into the future, if you can uh, date, the, date this video to then uh, with the Samsung phones that we're having uh, batteries catching on fire. Uh, but we have... Uh, we have users that are bringing their own devices in. They, they bring in their phones, they bring in their tablets, they bring in their laptops. Do we allow them onto the uh, network? And then we also have online collaborations such as uh, Skype, GoToMeeting, uh, Adobe Connect, where uh, users are connecting up Google Hangouts, uh, where we're connecting and uh, doing different things collaboratively online. Uh, video communications, cloud computing, those different aspects. Those are all new trends that are coming along and there's going to be more on, on the horizon that we don't even know what are there. So do we have the networks in place to be able to adapt and scale to those new trends? And I'm just going to go through these real quick. This is bring your own devices. That's where people bring uh, or users bring their own devices into the network. Uh, online collaboration, video communication, and cloud computing. That can be anything from uh, using uh, Google Hangouts uh, to using uh, Google Docs to uh, uh, just sharing you know, Office 365 with Microsoft. Uh, th those are the things that you can do with the cloud computing. Okay, so networking technologies for the home. Typically, at your home at this time, and this is late 2016, this is fall of 2016 when this video is being recorded, most homes in the United States have some type of uh, uh, internet connection. Uh, we're talking about some type of router coming from your ISP. Some people add their own routing devices in. I don't trust my uh, Comcast router to do my routing, so I have my, I have my own routers that I have set up, and those uh, configure um, the security of me going through. So I'm actually going through multiple routers to get out to the internet. It slows everything down a little bit, just by a small margin, but it gives me an extra layer of security because I'm controlling my own network and own devices that get on there. Uh, everything from our car. My car have, can syncs up to my, my smart device. So when I get in, uh, my phone can make phone calls. You know, it uses Bluetooth uh, technology. And my phone can make calls for me. I can press a button and tell it to make a phone call. It makes a phone call for me. It plays my music through the radio. Um, and so those are the devices that are all being connected together. I'm getting ready to put in some uh, outdoor security cameras on my house. And those outdoor security cameras are going to be tied into my network. And I'll be able to get on my mobile device and be able to look at the cameras that are broadcasting or uh, viewing my house from anywhere I have internet connection. So those are some trends that are happening. And we have to be able to set those up uh, as a technology person. Power line networking is something that a lot of us don't see in the in the world, but the power line networking is where we can use the uh, our electricity in our house, uh, the copper wires. The copper wires in our house are electricity in, in most in most homes in the United States, and the power line adapters we can uh, plug in a network, and it uses your home electricity, uh, your home um, 
copper wiring to send internet or to send networking through that. Uh, a lot of people aren't uh, a, a lot aren't aware that you could do that, but there are devices that you can set that up, and you can do um, uh, power line networking or networking through your uh, through your uh, through your electricity, electrical lines. Uh, we do wireless broadband, uh, where you may have a tower, a local ISP sets up a tower, and you may not be in an area, or a, a home may not be in an area where it gets some type of connection, either a DSL or a uh, cable connection, so they have to do some type of wireless broadband, so they would put wireless receivers in their house. Typically, you're going to do some type of, uh, you're going to do some type of uh, antenna, you're, you'll put an antenna up on your house, and that will receive from there and then you'll broadcast that on down and through your devices through your house typically is how that's going to work another aspect of our networks is is the security and security in my opinion is one of the most important pieces of it and it plays a big role in this class as you learn to secure things and it's something that you should never overlook um, so when we're talking about security uh, we're talking about things like putting in a firewall so that um, users aren't able to come in and see information that they're not needing to see. Uh, but there's different types of threats. You have external threats, and that's not the only piece to it. You also have internal threats. You have someone maybe in your network that's wanting to do harm to your network. Maybe you have a disgruntled employee that's working there, and they're wanting to do, or they just inadvertently open up the wrong website, and they they open up malware into the, into the network. Or they bring a, a home USB drive, uh, or they bring some type of a software from home, or they, they bring their own device, and it has malware on it, and they connect it into your network, and it, can, and it, gets, uh, it compromises your network then. So you have both external and internal threats coming in. And some of those threats can be viruses, worms, Trojan horses. Um, you have everything from spyware to adware, zero-day attacks. Zero-day attacks just means that there are attacks that have been created and there's no fix for them yet. That means that they are in the wild early on and the, uh, the uh, security companies have not created uh, fixes for those yet. They're also called zero-hour attacks. That just means there's not been a fix for them yet. They've, uh, they're, they're known, um, or maybe they're not known, but they're new out into the wild and there's no known fix for them as of yet. You have hacking attacks, and just because it's a virus or a worm or spyware doesn't mean it's a hack attack. Uh, hacker attacks are probably the le least uh, uh, of your worries. Uh, you're probably more worried about spyware, adware, viruses, worms, Trojan horses, but it's not the least of them because there are things that happen. Denial of service attacks, DOS attacks, you hear about uh, DOS or denial of services. Uh, that's where... Uh, uh, hackers or uh, people that are intent on doing harm will put uh, bot armies. They've taken over computers and they will send a whole bunch of traffic into a website trying to shut it down. And then you have data interception and theft. And that can be both digital and physical. You could have somebody walking into your facility and walking off with a laptop. And let's say that that laptop doesn't have encryption on it and it has uh, private information on it. Uh, and then that information is, you know, it walks out the door with someone stealing the laptop and then you've lost data. And then you've lost that integrity piece um, to your data because you know, don't know if it's uh, out in, in the wild. And then you have identity theft as well. That's another piece to the security. Some of the solutions... Uh, put antivirus, anti-spyware, anti-malware. Uh, we do filtering uh, on, on our networks, uh, so we filter traffic coming in and out. Uh, we don't allow traffic that shouldn't be in through there. We don't allow, you know, FTP traffic. Uh, you don't allow, uh, you know, you, you don't allow traffic unless it's been requested. So um, th those are some of the some of the solutions. Uh, you also put in a dedicated firewall systems, access control list, which means that it only comes in if it's been requested on the way out. Um, or certain things have access, other things get blocked. Uh, you also do intrusion prevention systems. Um, th those IPSs they set and they uh, try to, you know, they check to make sure that the system hasn't been um, corrupted. You hear uh, things about pen testing or penetration testing. Um, you, you hire someone or someone in your, uh, in your network or in your environment uh, tries to penetrate the network to see where uh, the weaknesses are and then try to fix those. And then we also use virtual private networks. If you're ever traveling, please never use hotel Wi-Fi or public Wi-Fi if you're doing anything uh, with your personal data uh, because it can be and will be um, easily stolen. 
um, hotels, um, when you connect into their Wi-Fi, everything to their router is unencrypted at that point. So unless you've encrypted it first and then sending it on through, uh, your data uh, to them is uh, could be easily um, easily taken. So you want to use some type of VPN, especially if you're working uh, with your company. Uh, you want to, and, and I'm not going to lecture here on what types of VPNs or what kind. There's plenty of resources on the internet to go find those, but you should be using some kind of VPN. And finally, we have the uh, when we talk about the certification and mo and like I said, the most reason, the most. A uh, common reason that you're watching this material or taking the Netacad course is you're working towards the CCNA or the Cisco Certified Network Administration. And they have what they call a pyramid or where they talk about the entry level, and that's where the CCNA comes in. And then they have the associate level, professional level, expert level, CCIE, and then you have the architecture level where you're an architect. Uh, and uh, moving on up the pyramid with those. So in summary, these two parts to Chapter 1, uh, we looked at how multiple networks are used in everyday life. We described the top different types of topologies, both physical and logical, uh, the types of devices that we use in medium and small businesses and networks. We looked at the uh, basic characteristics of networks that support communication, and we also ex looked at the trends in networking that will affect us into the future uh, and uh, of scalability. So the last slide is there. Thank you for watching this video. Again, click like down at the bottom or subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you want to see more information, uh, if you have any comments or feedback or information for me or even ask a question, just leave a comment down below and I'll be uh, I'll get back with you as quick as possible. And if you want to email me, my contact information is below as well. And hope you have a great day and I hope this information was helpful.